Good morning. Welcome to worship on this 16th Sunday after Pentecost. It's good to be gathered together as the people of God here on the lawn at Christ the King. And welcome to those who are uh, watching online, including uh, residents at the Bozeman Lodge and uh, others who are in their homes here in Bozeman and indeed across, uh, across the country. Um, uh, just a few words about uh, our, our worship this morning. Uh, you'll notice there's asterisks marking where uh, you are invited to stand if you so choose. We know that uh, using lawn chairs can be a bit unstable, uh, so use your own discretion when to, uh, when to stand or sit. Um, a communion this morning, um, we will practice social distancing. You uh, won't be ushered up, but you'll just come up under your own accord. Please keep social distance. Uh, uh, you'll receive uh, a wafer or a gluten-free wafer uh, with tongs, and then uh, we have wine and grape juice. Uh, please dispose of the cups in the uh, in the can provided. Um, and then uh, we won't uh, pass offering plates, but we have offering uh, plates available. Uh, the one up on top is for uh, regular offering, and the and the saucepan below is for uh, offerings to support uh, uh, the packathon, which we held in two weeks uh, to package up uh, 25,000 uh, bags of food for uh, uh, children in Haiti. Uh, that event's coming up uh, in two weeks. Um, we'll have some announcements uh, in, the, in the middle of worship. Again, uh, we welcome you in the name of our Lord. And if you need uh, bulletins, Pastor Lindeen and Amy, do you, you have, uh, uh, anybody need one? You can raise your hand and uh, we'll make sure you get one. All right, let us... Uh, gather together for worship. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who creates, redeems, and sustains us and all creation. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Faithful God, have mercy on us. We confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We turn from your loving embrace and go our own ways. We pass judgment on one another before examining ourselves. We place our own needs before those of our neighbors. We keep your gift of salvation to ourselves. Make us humble cast away our transgressions, and turn us again to life in you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Hear the good news. God hears the cries of all who call out in need, and through his death and resurrection, Christ has made us his own. Hear the truth that God proclaims. Your sins are forgiven in the name of Jesus Christ, led by the Holy Spirit, Live in freedom and newness to do God's work in the world. Amen.
grace of our the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And also with you. Lord be with you. Together let us pray. Almighty and eternal God, you show perpetual loving kindness to us, your servants. Because we cannot rely on our own abilities, grant us your merciful judgment and train us to embody the generosity of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The first reading is from Jonah, chapter 3, verse 10 through 4, 11. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed his mind about the calamity that he had said he would bring upon them, and he did not do it. But this was very pleasing to Jonah, very displeasing to Jonah, and he became angry. He prayed to the Lord and said, O oh Lord, is not this what I said while I was still in my own country? That is why I fled to Tarsich at the beginning, for I knew that you are a gracious God and merciful, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and ready to relent from punishing. And now, O oh Lord, please take my life from me, for it is better for me to die than to live. And the Lord said, Is it right for you to be angry? Then Jonah went out of the city and sat down east of the city and made a booth for himself there. He sat under it in the shade, waiting to say what would become of the city. The Lord God appointed a bush and made it come up over Jonah to give shade over his head to, give, to save him from his discomfort. So Jonah was very happy about the bush. But when dawn came the next day, God appointed a worm that attacked the bush so that it with withered. When the sun rose, God prepared a sultry east wind and the sun beat down on the head of Jonah so that he was faint and asked that he might die. He said, it is better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, is it right for you to be angry about the bush? And he said, yes, angry enough to die. Then the Lord said, you are concerned about the bush for which you did not labor and which you did not grow. It came into being in a night and perished in a night. And should I not be concerned about Nineveh, that great city in which there are more than 120,000 people who do not know their right hand from their left and also many animals? Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from Philippians, chapter 1, verses 21 through 30. For to me, 
living is Christ and dying is gain. If I am to live in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me, and I do not know which I prefer. I am hard-pressed between the two. My desire is to depart and be with Christ, for that is far better, but to remain in the flesh is more necessary for you. Since I am convinced of this, I know that I will remain and continue with all of you for your progress and joy in faith so that I may share abundantly in your boasting in Christ Jesus when I come to you again. Only live your life in a manner worthy of the gospel of Christ, so that whether I come and see you or am absent and hear about you, I will know that you are standing firm in one spirit, striving side by side with one mind for the faith of the gospel, and are in no way intimidated by your opponents. For them, this is evidence of their destruction but of your salvation. And this is God's doing, for he has graciously granted you the privilege not only of believing in Christ, but of suffering for him as well, since you are having the same struggle that you saw I had and now hear that I still have. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. So raise your hand if you brought your backpack or your briefcase today. Yeah? All right. Well, for the backpack blessing today, uh, we have these uh, hand sanitizer holders with hand sanitizer in them and a wonderful message on them. You are loved. And Amy and Cammie have graciously agreed to pass these hand sanitizer containers out. So if you would raise your hand if you brought your backpack or you just really want one to put on your, your backpack. And then they're going to bring them to you. And while they're handing these out, uh, I'm going to offer a blessing uh, for our backpacks and those who carry them. Let's pray. Gracious God, you have sent us out into the world. You have sent us into our communities, into our schools, into our workplaces, into our homes, which have become our schools and our workplaces. We ask that as we carry uh, these backpacks and the message on these hand sanitizer containers with us, that we would go with the knowledge that we are loved and we would carry your love to each person we come in contact with. Uh, bless us in our work, in our school, wherever it is you send us. In Jesus' name, amen. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 20th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus taught them another parable. For the kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out early in the morning to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with the laborers for the usual daily wage, he set them into his vineyard. When he went out about nine o'clock, he saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you also go into the vineyard, and I will pay you whatever is right. So they went. When he went out again about noon and about three o'clock, he did the same. And about five o'clock, he went out and found others standing around. And he said to them, why are you standing here idle all day? They said to him, because no one has hired us. He said to them, you also go into the vineyard. 
When evening came, the owner of the vineyard said to his manager, Call the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and then going to the first. When those hired about five o'clock came, each of them received the usual daily wage. Now, when the first came, they thought they would receive more, but each of them also received the usual daily wage. And when they received it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us who have borne the burden of the day in the scorching heat. But he replied to one of them, Friend, I am doing you no wrong. Do you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what belongs to you and go. I choose to give to this last the same as I give to you. Am I not allowed to do what I choose with what belongs to me? Or are you envious because I am generous? So the first will be last, and the last will be first. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Dear Christian friends, grace to you and peace from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus, who is the Christ. Amen. Too bad you don't have the minor prophet Jonah delivering the sermon this morning. It's one of the shortest in the Bible. God sent Jonah to the city of Nineveh, the Assyrian capital, to cry out against their wickedness. Now, we're only getting the end of chapter 3 and all of chapter 4, but to fully understand uh, what God is inviting or calling Jonah to do, and then Jonah's response to it, it helps to understand uh, the whole book. And, and it's an interesting book in that probably the only plausible, believable element in it is Jonah got swallowed by a fish and was there for three days. Because there's elements in this book that are really outlandish. The fact that uh, uh, a king calls his people, and indeed the animals in the city, to repentance. So wearing sackcloth and ashes. Uh, Martin Ingrid, can you imagine Sky wearing sackcloth and ashes uh, because she dug up all our irrigation pipe? Um, no. I don't, I don't think I could believe that. And the fact that uh, the king of the Assyrian Empire, the enemy of Israel and Judah, repented and called his people into repentance. And what's even more outlandish, dear friends, is the fact that God shows mercy. And yet, here we have it. Uh, it's in the canon of uh, the Christian church, but also in the, can in the canon of Judaism and of Islam. In fact, uh, uh, Jews, as they uh, observe Yom Kippur uh, this coming week, uh, will hear from uh, the book of Jonah as part of their observance. So God has sent Jonah to the city of Nineveh. And Jonah, being the obedient, faithful prophet that he is, uh, decides to take a boat in the opposite direction of Nineveh. But God had other plans. So a storm at sea threatened his voyage away from the destination that God has chosen for him. And in the midst of frightened sailors who demanded among them who had caused this calamity to strike, Jonah identifies himself. And he tries to extricate himself from the situation by calling upon the sailors to cast him into the sea to calm the storm. Except they don't do as he asked, but instead keep rowing the boat against the stormy waves. Then in desperation, they cry out to the Lord, do not let us perish on account of this man's life. Do not make us guilty of innocent blood for you, O God, have done as it pleased you. And when they picked Jonah up and cast him into the sea, as he asked, the storm ceased from its raging. And the sailors on that boat feared the Lord even more and offered sacrifice 
and made vows of obedience to the Lord. Then we come to the book, the part of the book of Jonah that most people, including Sunday school students, remember. Jonah was swallowed by a fish, and Jonah was in the belly of the fish for three days and three nights. But that's not all of the story. Jonah then prayed to the Lord in the, from the belly of the fish. And the Lord heard Jonah's cries, and then the Lord spoke to the fish, and it spewed Jonah out upon the dry land. The word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time, because the first time Jonah had not responded, responded to it in a positive manner. Get up, go to Nineveh, that great city, and proclaim it, proclaim to it the message that I tell you. Jonah then preaches his famously short sermon. Forty days more, and Nineveh shall be overthrown. In that one sentence, the people of Nineveh believed God. They proclaimed a fast, and everyone, great and small, put on sackcloth. And the king covered himself in sackcloth and sat in ashes, ancient signs of repentance. And then the king made a decree. No human being or animal or herd or flock shall taste anything. They shall not feed, nor shall they drink water. Human beings and animals shall be covered in sackcloth and cry mightily to God. All shall turn from their evil ways and from the violence that is in their hands. And who knows? God may relent and change his mind. He may turn from his fierce anger so that we do not perish. Now we pick up where our reading begins. When God saw what they did, how they turned from their evil ways, God changed God's mind about the calamity that God said God would bring upon them, and God did not do it. But this was very displeasing to Jonah, and he became angry. Let's sit with that for a moment. Being the husband to Lindine and the father of Mart and Ingrid, I'm reminded on occasion that Grant and Daddy gets angry. And they are telling the truth. And it hurts. Because then I have to acknowledge, why am I angry? Am I angry because, you know, rooms aren't picked up? Am I angry because I'm stumbling across something uh, in the laundry room? Am I angry because, you know, I did something and now it's exposed? Am I angry because uh, my hypocrisy is pointed out? I mean, in the richness of human relationships, we get angry. And, and certainly, um, I'm reminded in the environment in which we find ourselves, a global pandemic with natural disasters every day, uh, with events going around the world. Um, there's, uh, there's some anger. There's some frustration. And Jonah is angry at God because in another book of the Bible, Nahum, we have a reading which describes the destruction of Nineveh, because Assyria, the Assyrian Empire, was cruel. Enslaved people, killed people. And let me read for you uh, uh, from the book that describes the destruction of Nineveh. Nahum chapter 3. Ah, the city of bloodshed, utterly deceitful, full of booty, no end to the plunder. The crack of the whip and rumble of the wheel, galloping horse and bounding chariot, horsemen charging flashing sword and glittering spear, piles of dead heaps of corpses, dead bodies without end. They stumble over the bodies. I will throw filth at you and treat you with contempt and make you a spectacle. 
those who see you will shrink from you and say, Nineveh is devastated. Who will bemoan her? Where shall I seek comforters for you? Pretty descriptive words for uh, the destruction of an enemy. And yet this is not what Jonah gets. Jonah gets a God who is merciful. Let's pause for a moment and think about uh, regimes in world history and their peoples who perhaps don't deserve mercy. Adolf Hitler in Nazi Germany, Hirohito in the Empire of Japan, Joseph Stalin in the Soviet Union, Kim Il-sung in North Korea, Mao Zedong in Communist China, Ho Chi Minh in North Vietnam. In more contemporary times, Osama bin Laden in Al-Qaeda, ISIS, Iraq, Iran, the Taliban in Afghanistan. If world history is not your thing, how about something more local and contemporary? I mentioned uh, Sky Dog earlier. Um, Sky is going to obedience school this next week for the next four weeks. Um, I wasn't very merciful to Sky Dog because she ripped up all her irrigation pipe. And yet, uh, you know, in the midst of my anger, I realized that I didn't take upon the responsibility of taking her to obedience school when we first adopted her. And yet, I look at our devastated yard, and I don't feel very merciful. That's an example uh, in my life. Dear friends, when God shows unexpected mercy to people we feel don't deserve it, it smarts. That's the power of this short book in the Bible. The book of Jonah makes its points with humor and satire all over the grand stages of a great city, of land and water. And God even throws in the performances of sultry winds, a shade bush, a worm, and the hot beating sun itself. Jonah is first glad that God provided the shade of a bush but when God kills the shade tree by sending a worm, Jonah withers in the heat and pleads to die. And so God addresses Jonah with these words. Is it right for you to be angry about the bush? You are concerned about the bush for which you did not labor and which you did not grow. It came into being in a night and perished in a night. And should not I be concerned about Nineveh, that great city, in which there will be more than 120,000 persons who did not know their right from their left, and also many animals. In God's retort, and uh, for those of you who love literature, and for those of you uh, who love scripture, uh, Jonah's argument with God at the beginning of chapter 4 is 37 words in Hebrew. And of course, this being the Bible, God gets the last word, 37 words in Hebrew, at the end of chapter 4. So in God's retort, the emphasis is on God's sovereignty over and the care for all creation, not just Nineveh's repentance. The sea captain and the king were desperate to keep their people from perishing. And God, we learn, like Jonah, is attentive to that concern. God saves Nineveh from destruction and shows them mercy. And indeed, dear friends, God shows us mercy. And on this 16th Sunday after Pentecost, that's good news for you and good news for me. Thanks be to God. Amen. We continue with our hymn of the day.
We join with Christians around the world reciting the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Drawn together in the compassion of God, we pray for the church, the world, and all those in need. Generous God, you make the last first and the first last. Where your gospel challenges the church, equip it for its works of service. Strengthen these ministries of the Montana Synod, Bethel Lutheran in Grain, Hinsdale Lutheran, and First Lutheran in Glasgow. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Sun and wind, bushes and worms, cattle and great cities, nothing in creation is outside your concern, Almighty God. In your mercy, tend to it all. Be with firefighters and relief workers serving in the western states and the Gulf Coast affected by fires and hurricanes. Give us a spirit of generosity toward all you have made. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, where we find envy and create enemies, you provide enough for all. Bring peace to places of conflict. Victims of crime and those serving sentences. We thank you for the life of Supreme Court Justice Ruth Bader Ginsburg and her tireless work for justice and equality. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Lord, even beyond our expectations, you choose to give generously. Grant life, health, and courage to all who are in need, especially Ryan, Randy, Lori, and Daniel, Sarah, Rachel, Nache, Larry, Keith, Brooke, Navia, Dean, Eric, William, Butch, Bill, Duncan, Luke, and all those who we name before you. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Loving God, we rejoice at the marriage of Joel Benson and Hannah Johnson. Bless their union and guide them in your ways. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. Prayers from the congregation are invited. Lord, pour out your mercy upon Christine Graham at the death of her sister Kathy. Comfort Christine and her siblings as they mourn her death and as they give thanks for her life. For all the silent longings in our hearts, Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. God of Abraham and Sarah, we praise you for the generations that have declared your power to us. Give us faithfulness to follow them living for Christ, until you call us to join them in the joyful song around his throne. Lord, in your mercy, hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer. All these things and whatever else you see that we need, we entrust it to your mercy through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us share with, another, with one another a sign of God's peace.
I invite you to turn to our announcement sheet for a few announcements. Plans have been made to return to uh, worship in our worship space beginning October 11th. Uh, details about seating, distancing, and safety precautions uh, will be uh, shared with you in the days ahead. Um, on a, a Sunday, October 4th, we'll conclude uh, the season of creation and commemorate uh, St. Francis of Assisi on his feast day. So you're invited to bring your well-behaved pet um, uh, with you to worship, dogs on leashes, cats and carriers, etc. If your pet is shy or unruly, please bring a photo uh, for the blessing. Um, we have a, a listing of uh, numerous opportunities in which uh, uh, to learn. Some groups are meeting in person, keeping their social distance. Some are continuing to use uh, Zoom as a as a platform. Uh, numerous opportunities to serve. Um, uh, the Rock for uh, uh, Gallatin High School uh, is uh, meeting here uh, Monday, Tuesday, and Thursday, 6.45 to 9 a.m. We're still in need uh, of volunteers to be trained on how to greet uh, those students as they come and grab a cup of coffee, something to eat. Um, uh, it's an important and vital uh, ministry for uh, our new neighbors to, uh, uh, to the north of us. Um, Many of you have been struck by the news and the headlines of uh, fires and hurricanes and other natural disasters, partner, partnering with other synods across the United States. Um, uh, uh, Lutheran Disaster Relief uh, will send uh, uh, aid to, uh, uh, to those relief efforts. Um, Family Promise Night Without a br uh, Bed is coming up uh, this coming Saturday. Our participants are asked to sleep uh, anywhere without a bed. So a car, a tent, living room, floor, couch. Um, uh, this is to raise uh, funds for uh, uh, Family Promise of Gallatin Valley, of which we're uh, a partner church uh, in that important, uh, that important work. Um, and then uh, uh, you have a separate uh, announcement that was attached to your bulletin for the Gallatin Valley Packathon. Uh, we're still in need of volunteers who can help pack uh, uh, those bags of food over three days, uh, as well as raising funds uh, uh, to help uh, support that important uh, and, uh, and vital relief effort for uh, uh, children in Haiti. Um, so we encourage you to uh, take this home and uh, 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 let it be a source of uh, information uh, for you. Um, we're not receiving... Uh, uh, offering this morning by passing the plate, but we do have a plate up here for general offering, and the soup pot is for uh, is for the packathon. And we are also receiving uh, gifts for the food pantry uh, at Gallatin uh, at Gallatin High School. Uh, our service continues with our offertory. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, O Lord our God, uh, Lord of heaven and earth. And so with the uh, uh, angels in heaven and all the creatures on earth, we praise you and join their unending hymn.
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body broken for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom. Teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Again, as I announced earlier, uh, you won't be uh, ushered up, but come uh, forward under your own accord. We have uh, wafers as well as gluten-free wafers, which have decided now to blow into the wind. Uh, so Dawn, if I could have some assistance in retrieving those. Um, and then uh, receive uh, either the uh, uh, cup of uh, wine or of uh, grape juice, and then dispose your cup in the, uh, in the trash can. Um, please remember to keep social distance as you come forward. We sing as we are served. Uh, uh, this is uh, uh, this feast is prepared for us. Come, for all is ready. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Together we pray. We give you thanks, gracious God, that you have once again fed us with food beyond compare, the body and blood of Christ. Lead us from this place, nourished and forgiven, into your beloved vineyard to wipe away the tears of all who hunger and thirst, guided by the example of the same Jesus Christ, and led by the Holy Spirit, now and forever. Amen. Mothering God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you and lead you into life of truth, of truth and life. Amen. We sing.
We are a Christian community practicing discipleship as we worship, learn, and serve. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.